Hello and welcome to Ding Business in Rwanda. I'm Irene Birunji Mugisha. The Rwanda services sector is seen as a key pillar of the economy, which will propel the country into a middle income country by 2012. Tourism, education and ICT have traditionally been the core of the services sector. However, knowledge-based industries such as financial services, logistics and healthcare are fast emerging with equal importance. The first ever service investment forum was a watershed event in the Rwanda's tertiary sector. The conference held in Kigali last month convened business communities and policymakers with the purpose of attracting capital into knowledge-based services and unleashing opportunities in the sector. Rwanda has got lots of assets. The political, social and economic stability. The leadership which has formulated a vision to transform Rwanda from where it is today to become a middle-income economy in 2020. <clears throat> now I think <clears throat> the mission is to transform that vision into a strategy, into a concrete action plan that will deliver on what the political leadership and the country has decided. And there are various ideas that are being discussed from making of Rwanda a finance hub, a trade and transport logistic, a center for knowledge, and you need to invest in institutions, you need to invest in people, and you need to invest in infrastructure. Rwanda is ideally located geographically. You are in the center of Eastern and Central Africa, and Rwanda can play a significantly important role as a regional player in education, in health, in ICT, in BPO, in trade, and in finance. The Services Investment Forum is uh, to demonstrate uh, the importance of the services sector to Rwanda's economic development plans. We have a five-year uh, medium-term strategy called the EDPRS2, where we would like Rwanda to become a middle-income status and to grow by 11.5% GDP. Now, to do that, we have uh, identified that the services sector is the one that is going to drive this growth. We expect almost a 14% annual growth of the services sector, and we expect that uh, in the next, by the next five years, the services sector should contribute 55% of the economy which today is about 45%. So clearly uh, for us, in order to reach the economic development that we want to, to reach, which is to become a middle income status country, the services sector needs to grow fast and needs special attention. So that is why uh, we decided to hold an investment conference that focuses on the services sector so that we can show business communities uh, from within Africa and beyond the opportunities we have uh, in these services sectors. Services Investment Forum um, is a platform that we hope will gather together both investors and local operators. Um, definitely the plan of, of the country is to move into a service-based economy. We thought that organizing such an event will create a milestone every year um, to remind our business community, the government, the policymakers, that we are ready to move in the, in the service-based economy. The forum was timed to supplement Rwanda's development goals for the next five years, growth domestic product per capita of 1,240 US dollars by 2017, and sustain economic growth at 11.5%. Rwanda has a very conducive environment to do business. Rwanda today is ranked the third easiest place to do business in Africa, and that is because it is uh, easier than in many uh, economies to have, for example, land registered, to have construction permits if you want to build, to have land transferred. It's very easy to, 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 to lodge a case in court, a commercial dispute, and have it resolved within 100 days. If you want to register a company, it takes six hours. It's the eighth easiest place in the world to register a company in Rwanda. So these governance and these business reforms that we've done make Rwanda one of the top three uh, hotspots to invest in Rwanda and we think this makes Rwanda attractive for investments. We have a, our traditional services in Rwanda that we promoted and that we somehow developed 
Uh, I mentioned the ICT, which really uh, enable you know the infrastructure to to, to fast track other services. We also have tourism, tourism, which has been developed as a high end tourism, Gorilla. Uh, but now beyond those uh, traditional services, we are focusing a lot on financial services, logistics and um, health services. Areas of discussion during the forum tackled issues such as establishing a regional financial center, revamping transport and logistics services, strengthening ICT infrastructure, and improve the health care services. The last effort in a bid to position the country as a medical tourism destination. Our concern today, and this is we're engaging with the Minister of Finance and RDB, is how do we attract other forms of financial services, the funds, the equity funds, the uh, startup funds. I think that's where we are concerned more than having uh, an, international, an international bank because we think our banks are doing, already doing a great job and with ICT today, uh, we are all becoming a global village. So while we, we talk of some of these banks we have here as maybe regional or, or local, they are connected to these international brands. So anything you want to trade with the international brands, you can easily do it through either the regional banks we have here or the, 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 the local banks we have here. So I think our main concern is really trying to, to attract the, uh, the other sources of financing and investment bankers and, uh, and the like that would really support uh, uh, the financing uh, that we require uh, to grow this economy. We want Rwanda to become a world-class health services, uh, promoting medical tourism. We already, we've been able to attract um, an eye care center on the, uh, on the ground, uh, servicing already the region. The, the, the eye care is from India, called the Agawa Hotel, um, high hospital, sorry. Um, in the same strategy, we want to develop more specialties in the health sector. This investment uh, forum was to, was a sort of um, opportunity both for uh, Rwanda to understand how private investors would look at the services sector and then how also um, investors, you know, for opportunities for investors. Uh, and I think it was very timely because it's in the services sector. And for me personally, then my interest is in, in health and that's health education as well because I have a university in, in Uganda. Uh, one of the things that Rwanda tends to be known for, you know, if they focus on something then they, they want to do it. And I think in the services uh, sector, uh, there's a long way to go if Rwanda is going to build up. But I think if there is really the political will um, uh, allied with the, uh, with the right uh, partners, then they can achieve it. Investment in Rwanda's services sector will be underpinned by successful public-private partnerships. Government has done a lot and uh, uh, there's no way we can be talking good services when there is no good policy. The government has put on uh, a good policy, roadmap has been designed, so we are really very much happy to be in that services and uh, we are going to make sure that uh, uh, these services is going to attract more visitors, it's going to attract also people to move freely from here and there. Uh, as we are a member of East African community, this will be a, a good achievement for a country, uh, especially like Rwanda. Rwanda is different from many African countries uh, in the sense that it is um, how can you say? You need to work with government. You, you know, if you just you can come in as a private investor and just do your own thing. But if you want to be involved significantly, then you need to know what the government is thinking and where they're going. And then if your particular uh, niche will fit in with that. Um, now, obviously, Rwanda has made very large strides uh, in terms of um, building up their GDP and so on. But it's still a small economy. And it's still a landlocked country, and has very many. It still has very many challenges. I mean, it, it, but then again, if you look back over the last 19 years, you wouldn't have given Rwanda much hope. Uh, and so, where they've where they've arrived at today, even in terms of what they were saying, their the target what was that 35% of the people should be employed in the service sector, and they're at 45% if you take tourism and so on. Rwanda's six priority services subsectors are financial services, ICT, logistics, healthcare services, tourism and education. 
The forum showcased trade and investment opportunities in the sectors as well as an opportunity to discuss policy issues to improve the business environment. I think the government of Rwanda and RDB in organizing this conference is actually doing this, is to bring stakeholders from outside Africa, from the region, and also the Rwandese people. We need to understand basically what is the strategy, what is the vision, and what is being done in order to improve and sharpen the competitiveness uh, of Rwanda. And it's also a learning process. You exchange views and ideas. And one of the things that will happen is that you tap on the expertise and the experience and the knowledge of people who come here. Because as I said, you know, this is a highly competitive world. And maybe by sharing expertise and experience, you can improve and sharpen basically the competitiveness of Rwanda as an investment destination. So the outcome of such a forum, the Service Investment Forum, is to make sure we, we link both investors that we invited in those respective sectors, uh, policymakers, so that we understand what are the challenges for them to invest in Rwanda and that we can ease the process, but also to create linkages within, with, between them and our local uh, business operators. The whole point is once you've done this, such a gathering, we now start engaging discussion on what is hindering, what is hindering the, the, the growth of that sector. And then us as governments, we're now tackling the issues. Rwanda has undergone years of reconciliation following the 1994 genocide period, which claimed a million Rwandese. The country is building strategic systems and reforms which promote sustainable economic growth and a stable political environment. I've seen many changes yeah, since the end of genocide. Yeah, in terms of education, um, the number of children who go to school is increasing. Yeah, and um, we have um, development in technology. Uh, we have development in agriculture. Yeah, we have um, uh, development in uh, many domains. You also need to build a brand that Rwanda will be remembered for because this is a flat world. It's very crowded what you want to do and competition is very hot. So you need to have a, a real unique set of competitive advantages that you can go around and tell people to come and invest in Rwanda. I think the political will is there, the leadership is there, the vision is there. Now what you need is the entire population, you know, to transform this vision into concrete actionable plan and go out and sell it and market it and promote it. They have had a good growth of the uh, tertiary education sector and they have good 97% uh, of basic education. But someone very insightfully said, you know what, we need to get pre-primary education. If our children are not uh, taught in the right modern, educa modern education values and taught to be lifelong learners and so on, there's no point in cramming kids full of facts for nine years and then they go out into the big bad world and then they're supposed to be critical thinkers. We should start at the beginning. And those thinking, all that thinking is good, that's right. Uh, my question was, who's going to pay for it? Because uh, I did ask the minister afterwards, I said, well, in, on vocational training, who's going to pay? And he said, well, it's, it's to be the person to pay for it, but the government will definitely come in with subsidies. Uh, so we would, we would look for maybe <coughs> organisations which would provide uh, the education, the modules and so on, but then we as government will then, give it, uh, where we know people can't afford, then we will subsidise the fees. And if there are sufficient subsidies, that's good. Because uh, my experience obviously of Africa is that there's always plenty of need but what's the ability to pay? You know, I could say in the health sector. There's an infinite amount of pathology and disease, there's an infinite amount of demand, but what's the ability to pay? Yeah. Service Investment Forum mapped out steps for Rwanda to place itself as the services sector hub in the region and on the African continent. Rwanda actually initiated the setting up of the East African Tourism Platform. So we do have a private sector platform that, that uh, represents all the apex bodies in the five countries. That, that creates uh, a basis for interaction on a higher level with governments as concerns the, the one visa or one destination. So it's, it's, a, it's really a very positive development. The possibility for, for, for community trade within East Africa, everyone knows that that is 
theoretically there and theoretically possible. And we had actually a meeting two weeks ago with the Rwanda president, the uh, Uganda president and Kenya president. And they were addressing issues of oil pipelines, railway infrastructure uh, and speed of delivery of goods from the coast. And this is obviously a bigger problem the deeper you get inland like Rwanda. Um, but if there is the will and if there is the lobby from the different governments to ensure that they are getting as good a slice of the pie as possible, then a lot of things, uh, you know, this cost of doing business and so on can come down. So <clears throat> to me, you, it needs to focus at the political level. And this level is not just the elected politician, but it's people like the RDB and the actual ministries and so on. And there needs to be a concerted, uh, concerted effort that says, no, we want the best deal for our country. Uh, and you can overcome these problems. And they, uh, but I see there's a slow moving toward a really a common market, but uh, it's, a, it's a different speeds. Rwanda has identified key um, opportunities in the financial services sector, and then ICT, including business process outsourcing. Uh, we also have uh, medical uh, services, including medical tourism, where we would like to provide medical services to the region from within Rwanda, and also uh, general tourism and uh, transport and logistics.